beautiful Cancerian friends and welcome to your horoscope for April 2020 and Cancer this month is such an interesting month I think first of all it's a little bit uh, less distracting than I think some months have been with so many big aspects so many big things going on instead this month I feel like April is action-packed with opportunities to continue some forward motion before we step back into some retrograde time not to mention this month holds our very first um, Jupiter Pluto conjunction which is brilliant we've also got the Sun at the tip top of your chart so this is phenomenal for paying attention to your reputation your eighth house is loaded this month and Uranian energy is stimulated. So this is a phenomenal energy for your finances, whether that be paying down debt or making different decisions around your finances or anything like that. So I feel like April is actually a very good month for you to get some things handled and to continue to move forward. So let's jump in and talk about what's going on this month for you this month. First of all, a couple things we want to pay attention to and bring to the surface right away. We still continue to see both Mars and Saturn over here in this Aquarian energy. So continuing to light up your eighth house. Now Mars is obviously going to be there all long, all month long, as well as Saturn as well. So this brings an air of seriousness to the table. It brings this air of action. Remember, Mars is action. He's movement. You're, you're actually taking your energy and getting something done here. Saturn is grounding this energy. And remember, Saturn is comfortable here in Aquarius. He is one of Aquarius's ruling planets. So you have action. You have energy. You have a seriousness. If you are paying down debt, if you're going to therapy, if you are taking on things at a social level, right? This is the uh, this is a natural 11th house energy. That is Aquarius, but Aquarius here is ruling your 8th house. So maybe depth with friends, depth with social groups. Something like that could certainly be going on. Now, one of the other things I considered as I look at this Aquarian energy and the impact it has for you is that the ruling planet of Aquarius is Uranus as well as Saturn. Now Uranus is over here in Taurus energy. So Uranus is shaking up that Taurus energy, which has a lot to do with value as well. But when we also assign that back over to your finances in the eighth house, I think that this is a month where you can do good things with your finances. Um, but it's also a month where you may feel like finances are maybe a little bit unstable or something surprising, Uranian energy, something surprising comes up and you have to pay for it. If an expense came up that was kind of a surprise or came out of nowhere, you know, we've got a lot of quarantine stuff going on, so that's definitely a possibility. It's almost as if the money to pay for it would show up. So if that's something that you're dealing with, just know that this is a helper for you this month as well, okay? On the third, we're going to see Venus, who's now in the energy of Taurus over here, move out of Taurus and move into the energy of Gemini. So Venus is going to come here into your 12th house. So Venus in the 12th house, first of all, wherever Venus goes, she's trying to bring harmony. She's a benefic planet, so she's trying to bring some benefit to you. She wants to help here, right? So benefits to your relationships. Benefits to your finances, benefits to your heart. Remember, Venus is over our love style, the way that we give affection, the way that we'd like to receive it. So even here in the 12th house, she could be taking you back to something that you're going back over. Are you communicating with someone from the past? Gemini, communicating, past, 12th house. Maybe this is you're talking to someone from your past or you've got a very busy eighth house this month maybe you're talking to someone about behaviors that you had from the past and you're trying to heal them coming forward right if you've had debt or you're trying to find out how to get out of debt venus could be helping you bring those shadowy behaviors that got you there to the surface so that you can shine them in the light this could be a past romance that comes to your attention even if it's just that you're sitting and you're thinking over your love life or you're meditating you're going into night Nice, deep meditation, spiritual practices about your heart, about love that you'd like to have in your life, love that you'd like to shine out, something like that. The other thing I am always mindful of when Venus comes into the 12th house is that this is an energy of things that are hidden. So if there is a hidden love affair or something like that going on, 
or a hidden financial practice or hidden something like that happening, Venus is going to try and smooth that over here. But Venus is also a very magnetic energy here in the 12th house. So if you are starting a romance, the thing I tell people all the time is if Venus is coming into that 12th house and you're starting a romance, make sure everyone is free to be involved in that romance because it could certainly hurt on the other side. But if everybody's free and clear, this could literally be like, oh my gosh, where did you come from? You came out of nowhere. Create and enjoy the beauty of Venus over there in Gemini because you're going to be speaking it out, making decisions, and certainly thinking about it. We've also got on that same day, we've got Mercury over here in a conjunction with Neptune lighting up this ninth house space for you. Now, Mercury, Neptune, they're in the energy of Pisces in the first place. So this can get a little bit foggy right? This can be a little bit foggy. Mercury is in fall in this position. So what I'm going to tell you is this is a wonderful day for trusting your intuition. Venus has just moved into Gemini. Have those deep conversations. Listen to those love songs. Create. Let this be a beautiful, creative, expansive energy that changes your thinking. It softens your thinking. You bring in forgiveness. You bring in higher ideals, higher beliefs that you have maybe about morals or ethics. But this is not the best day to make big life-changing decisions in this area of your life. This is not the best day to sign up for that new course unless it happens to be a course in something spiritual, maybe something you walk in between the worlds with. This energy is just a little bit too foggy, so it's almost as if you don't have all of the information. But if it's something creative or something intuitive, trust it, walk with it, and absolutely enjoy that. Enjoy the study of that, okay? On the 4th, we've got Jupiter and Pluto who are together over here in the energy of Capricorn and they're coming together for their one of three times of a conjunction happening this year. This particular time when they go into conjunction, they are both out of retrograde. So we know we've got full forward motion happening here, right? Now this energy over here does keep the attention and the focus on some things with relationships. But as Jupiter and Pluto come together in this conjunction, they are driven. You are driven to expand here. You are driven to create something big and beautiful. You want success here. What you create, the actions you take here will create success. So in your relationships, where are you ready to have a successful relationship or change the dynamic in a relationship? Where are you ready to have new relationships come into your life and show you ways out of shadowy behaviors, show you those ways out of debt, be the counselor in your life? Where are you ready to have some forgiveness? Like, it's like you've got to evolve in these relationships. And it's not just romantic relationships. It's the relationships from the past. It's the relationship with you yourself, Cancer. It's the relationships where you're going to allow someone new, something good to come into your life that is going to transform you. But the trick here, right, is we've got this transiting south node over here, Cancer. If you've got the same old, same old behaviors, actions, ideas, people in your life, those are not the ones that are going to help you move forward. So pay attention. Look around. Investigate. Use this Saturn Mars energy over here. Investigate. Who's in your social circle? Who is feeding you? Who are you getting your food and your nourishment from every day, right? And if they are the same old people because the South Node likes to keep us at behaviors from the past, behaviors that we've been doing for a very long time, that's not going to nourish you. If you want to be nourished, you've got to move towards this node over here where Cancer says, it's okay for me to put these things down and be fed. Step into a tribe. Step into friendships. Step into relationships. Allow myself to be adjusted in relationships so that I can nourish other people around me. So ask the question of nourishment at this time. Because whatever you start, Whatever you put your back into with this Jupiter-Pluto conjunction here is going to be something that you're going to see success start to come to. And then you've got two other retrogrades or two other times with this conjunction where it will be in retrograde where you get to look over this. The other thing I would ask you is 13 years ago. What is something serious that you took on? You were driven. It was absolutely, you were prepared to evolve, to change, and to move in order to go forward towards that. They only come together every 13 years. So look back to that time, what was happening for you. Call it to memory, have courage, and drive and jump forward, okay? 
On the 7th, we're going to have a full moon that's happening down here in the energy of Libra. Now, Libra down here is going to light up your fourth house space. So the fourth house is home, family, real estate, property, things from the past, women in your life, all of those things are lit up. Now, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we need to make an adjustment of some variety here. Something needs to be different than it was. Now, one of the things I think of is, first of all and foremost, this is going to be at 18 degrees of Libra. First and foremost, I go straight to the home. Is your home situation changing? We've got quarantines going on all over the place. Are you having to adjust to working from home now? You've got to get the computer gear ready. You've got to figure out your routine. Like home life itself has changed. The sun is at the tip top of your chart up here, right? Um, this has a lot to do with your work and your reputation. In opposition to our moon down here, this could certainly be a change in your home due to your work situation. We've also got Venus in Gemini in a closing house in the 12th house. So this could also be an energy where maybe you were involved with um, like a work project or something and it's coming to an end and now you've got to change to your home or something like that. The other thing I think of with the fourth house and the moon, because the moon is a natural home energy, is that you're going home in some way, shape, or form. You're going back home. You're going to what feels good. You're going to what feels safe. You're going to what cancer identifies as home or you're making your home. So it could be something that you're traveling back to. Now, if you're doing a lot of this shedding and cleaning out debt, cleaning up relationships, um, clearing out old karma, old any of those things, that's a place where we're very vulnerable and we have to go back home and be safe enough to do that work. So in some way, shape, or form, you could certainly be going back home. Now, the last thing I want to say, and I keep being shown this, so I'm not sure who this is for, but this could actually be an ending of a home as well because the moon does bring culmination. So maybe your lease is up or something like that and you're moving out of one home and you're moving into another, but all of those things would definitely be present. The other thing we have to keep in mind is that this is Libra. So Libra is saying, where am I out of balance in what I perceive to be home? Cancer, where do you need to restore balance between work and home, between who you've always been and who you're ready to be, right? Look at those balancing questions as this Libra full moon comes along for you. Now, on the 9th, Venus is still going to be here in the energy of Gemini, but on the 9th until May 13th, Venus enters into her pre-retrograde um, status. Now, Venus is already in a motion all month long that we call out of bounds, which means that she is traveling a little bit out of her norm and her usual pattern. And so what that means for us is that in this 12th house space, you're going to have to look outside of your normal realm of doing things, of success in order to be successful. And then as Venus enters into this pre-retrograde shadow time, you may be getting little glimpses of things from your past cancer. You may be getting psychic things, visions. Maybe you're hearing music. Maybe you feel like guides are connecting with you. Maybe you're just really feeling like it's time to get those toes into this meditation, um, research, any information that has been hidden. You may be starting to go back over that, but the way that you're doing it and interacting with that is that you are going out of your normal bounds, your normal comfort zone to bring the work to the table. So remember from April 9th, all the way until May 13th, Venus is starting to slow down to get prepared for that retrograde. So in this area too, you may feel like spiritual progress is coming very slowly and that's okay because Venus is slowing down so that is what's happening. Um, then she's going to retrograde from May 13th until June 25th. You'll go back over and review things in this area, finances, relationships, secrets, all of those things so that you can be free from them on the other side of the retrograde. On the 11th, we see Mercury now ready to leave the energy of Pisces, where it's been for a very long time, and come here into the energy of Aries. So Mercury in Aries, I always laugh because my husband has this placement, so it's just like you say it, right? Like you're here to win. So when Mercury moves into the energy of Aries, first of all, it's at the tip top of your chart. You could find that business or something that you are involved with very publicly 
gets busy. Now it is always when the sun is at the tip top of your chart, you want to guard your reputation. You want to nurture that thing. You want to be motivated to have a good reputation, a good name, be known for something good. But Mercury is just bringing some busyness here as well. There's conversation. There could be lots of phone calls. You could be making a lot of decisions and going over things at this particular time. Either way, until April 27th, Mercury is going to be here at the tip top of your chart. So expect workplace conversation, what I'm doing in the world conversation. If you are retired, this could even be, you know, um, are you feeling like you need to volunteer or you need to contribute and give to the world in some way, shape or form? This is the time where you can see yourself being very busy and having those conversations and making those decisions. You could also, I'm being shown this, you could also be going back, probably Venus and Gemini, to learning something new in order to advance your career. So whoever that's for, that one's for you. On the 19th, we've got the sun moving out from the tip top of your chart and moving into the energy of Taurus in your 11th house, joining Uranus as well. Sun into the 11th house. First of all, you're typically very comfortable with Taurus energy. So even if it's not your birthday, you're like, yay, Taurus, I still like you, right? The moon is exalted in the energy of Taurus because it is very happy and comfortable there. So as the sun comes here, it's bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. It's lighting up your 11th house. It's time to get a new tribe. It is time where the sun goes to pay attention to who you are on social media. What are you eating? What are you consuming in a social way and is it feeding your soul are you feeding other people very much so in the 11th house as well this is causes this is organizations um cancer i'm seeing a vision of soldiers maybe you're having um mercury and aries you're making decision or we're hearing news about soldiers or or maybe um groupings of people who are trying to do something and push it forward and you're getting that news and it's also impacting you maybe you're even stepping out to be helpful there in some way shape or form certainly Another thing that I think of is in the general reading, Leo rules your second house. So this is a house of money for you, how you make money. But Leo is ruled by the sun. As the sun jumps off of the board, but was in the 11th house, what we know is that you may be making money. You may be having income or something like that come from a very social zone. And everybody knows, everybody's been Zooming left and right, so it could just be that you're Zooming at this time, but this is connected to your money making as well. On the 22nd, we're gonna have a new moon which needs the sun if we're going to have a new moon. We're going to have a new moon up here in your 11th house. Everybody stay there. So we're going to have a new moon up there in the 11th house. And this is where you're going to plant these seeds of intention. Do you need a tribe? Do you want new friends in your life? Are you ready for a new social group, a new organization, a new future for yourself in some way, shape, or form. Or maybe it's not even new. It's just you're taking steps towards it. You're ready to advance it. You've seen changes that need to be made. And you're ready to light up. You're ready to have this three degrees new moon take you forward into people, places, and things that are solid and steady and can exalt you just the way that the moon gets exalted when it comes into the energy of Taurus. On the 25th, Pluto over here is going to start his retrograde, okay? And I'm going to be doing a separate video on Pluto retrograde, so make sure you check that out. But as Pluto retrogrades here in your relationship zone, Pluto is our Phoenix energy. So these are not necessarily new relationships that he's going to be helping you look back and review over. You're going to review how your relationships need to transform so that they can evolve, so that you can be empowered in relationships, how you need to transform so that you can be um, evolved in relationships. And again, this is to the tune of moving away from old behaviors, right? But as Pluto takes this retrograde, you have five months to see these things kind of need to die off so that they can live in a way that's more healthful for you, so that you can die off, so that you can live in a way that's more healthful, that is more empowered in your relationships. As we close out this month, we see Mercury actually leaving the energy of Aries up here and moving over into the energy of Taurus. So your Taurus energies, your 11th house has been very busy this month as well. So we know that social things are still your consideration. As Mercury moves into the energy of Taurus, it'll be here until May 11th. You're going to start to have conversations of money and relationships. That's what Taurus is about. This is also about food. This is also about steady 
practical, dependable, long range plans and goals and designs and friends and social groups that what they do in this 11th house space is they surround you in tribe energy, but encourage you to be yourself, encourage you to shine and to shine forward. They literally put you in under tribe energy that makes you feel so safe that you get to shine. Now, even if this is at an organizational level out in the world, this will be an energy where you're creating something sustainable here. You're having long, sustainable conversations. You're making long, sustainable um, decisions about your future life going forward. So you see what I mean, Cancer? It's actually a month, despite the fact that some of the planets just jumped off the board, it is a month where I think you have the ability to make progress on things you've been trying to make progress on, and they've maybe been held back. You just have to think out of your bounds. You maybe have to move a little bit out of your bounds, but the ability to have forward progress in that money and in those relationships and in the friendship groups this month is absolutely abundant. And you want to jump in and take advantage of those before we hit retrograde time. The retrograde time is nothing to be afraid of, but we're going to start to slow down here as we move into May. So that forward motion, you want to do most of it, most of what you can now so that you can just make adjustments as we get into the high retrograde eclipse times, okay? All right, my beautiful Cancer friends, it's always a privilege to be here with you every month. So like this video, comment, share, subscribe. If you haven't grabbed your Spring Equinox gift, please make sure that you do it. You can check it out in the description box down below or, of course, at stormygrace.com. I love you guys. Bye, everyone.